Hi guys, Sandy from the Paddle School here. Today we're in the Avicii Arena on the morning of the World Paddle Tour Finals, courtesy of the Swedish Paddle Open. And we're going to discuss something that we see all the time in recreational play. And it's really, really frustrating and it destroys your confidence if this happens. And that is when your partner is hogging your ball. So we're gonna talk about when that situation occurs and how we can avoid it. To begin with, we're gonna discuss when the ball is yours and when the ball is your partner's and it's slightly different in paddle than it would be to tennis for example because it is not always the person that is hitting the forehand often it depends on the game situation it depends on the previous shot from your team for example if my partner is playing a ball near the glass and he's onto the side then a ball goes down the middle even if it's my backhand i will move across and play that as a backhand at the back of the court so there are certain times in the game situation that you play not according it's his forehand or my forehand you know when you decide and this is even more important when you've got a lefty on this side you need to be really clear which is your ball and which is your partner's ball so the most common times that we see it on the court the first one we're going to discuss is at the back of the court and that is me for example as a right side player the ball coming onto my side and i'm going to play a backhand is my partner coming across and taking that on the forehand and this is really really difficult because if i'm playing with a stronger partner it's normal that they will play on the left hand side it's also normal that they will take you know the lobs that might come down the middle when it's advantageous to them to hit that ball and if you watch the world paddle tour you'll see even though the level of both the players you know are, are pretty much equal the player on the left hand side will come across and take that ball that is more central because it's a more advantageous shot the difficulty and the problem that we see at recreational level is that players are coming way too far to, to take that ball and put themselves out of position and therefore it's not an advantageous shot. And all that is doing is ruining the confidence of the player on the right side, for example. So if that ball is coming in to the backhand side and I'm getting prepared to play a forehand and the left court player comes and almost pushes me out of the way to hit that ball, not only are they putting themselves out of position, but they're also like ruining my confidence, my confidence. Next time that ball comes down to my backhand, I'm gonna go like this and, and they're gonna take that ball. And all it takes is two or three times and suddenly I've lost the confidence on that backhand from the back. Probably the most common time that we see this is for the overheads. When the lob goes up, the player on the left-hand side, often at the recreational level, we see this more, where they'll go, they'll shout mine, they feel like they're the stronger player, they're gonna come across and take an overhead that probably should have been their partners. Now, at the World Paddle Tour level, we do see this where the lob goes up and the left player comes across because they think that they're going to finish that point. And we see it a lot with the, the top players in the world. And the right court player understands that. They're in a slightly better position to hit it. They know that their partner can finish that point. So it doesn't affect them you know, mentally or, or psychologically on that next time they might get that opportunity. But at the recreational level, it's really, really difficult because the right court player might be in a really good position to hit this bandeja. And then if the left court player shouts and comes across and almost pushes them out the way, then the next time that opportunity comes, the right court player is, is almost going to shrink and allow that left court player to take more and more balls. And eventually you get to a point in a match where they don't have confidence in their overhead. And that happened to me a lot when I was starting because I was playing with a more experienced paddle player on the left-hand side, they would take a lot of those balls and I would play some matches where I would allow two or three of those to happen. Then eventually I would just leave it for my partner. And then suddenly he's covering three quarters of the court and we've tactically fallen into a bad positioning. So a couple of ways to avoid this. Firstly, communication with your partner. Now this can be just as simple at the change of ends or when this happens, just to say to them, look, you know, I feel like that was my ball. Um, you know, I, I just want to, you know, practice that shot. I want to get confidence with that shot. And if you take too many of them, then I'm going to lose that confidence. So the first is, is that communication. The second is really loud and and kind of forceful call for the ball and and when i mean that i mean uh, uh, we've been in in stockholm this week and we've worked with a lot of players on communication 
And it's not, you know, the ball goes up and, and you kind of say mine, or is it yours, or is it mine? And, and, and it's all too soft and too gentle. It's got to be, you know, a nice loud call, that's mine, and to come across and to take it with confidence. And, and, and that way, you almost set the tone for your partner as well. Because if you start being a little bit timid or, 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 or too polite, um, then your, your, your partner will then end up coming across and taking it because he isn't feeling that confidence from you. So the topic we've discussed in this video is really, really important that your partner understands this because it's not just talking the tactics of the game. It is tactical, but we're talking about the mental side and giving confidence to your partner because if both you and your partner are confident, then you're going to play much better paddle. So on this side, I'm gonna put a video about communication with you and your partner on and off court, and that will be a good place to go if you want to improve that part of your game.